What's up, guys? Serious video today. Here to tell you we're living in a generation where it's cool to smoke weed. It's, it's a celebration to drink alcohol. It's normal to just have reckless sex. No consequence. We're living in a very demonic generation. Lies all over the media. And it's important to have good discerning skills to be able to pick everything out and remember back to the words of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. It's okay to listen to music. It's okay to hang out with friends. But be that sober friend. Be the friend that doesn't smoke, that doesn't drink. And then you'll see who your real friends are. It's okay to talk to women. It's okay to have a lot of women. But don't do anything with them. Don't get sexual with them. You might you might need to talk to a lot of women to pick out which one you want to be your wife. Then then you need to, you know, focus in on one. It's nothing wrong with talking to women. But do not be sexually immoral. Don't start having sex. Just start talking to women. That's a rush in its own. Just talking to women. Like, you know, it gives you adrenaline to say to like say something to them. Right? So be the sober friend. Don't be a thought. You can talk to women. But just have a lot of friends that are women. Maybe one day something more will come. Okay? Don't be a social media head. Don't be this person on social media and then in your real life you're not that person at all. Don't be that person. Just be yourself. But more importantly, uh, follow the words of God. It's not cool to smoke weed. It's not. It's... It's not a celebration when you get a bottle, when you get some beers. That's not a celebration. Cook yourself a meal. Talk with your friends. I'm to the point where I feel drunk without drinking a drop of alcohol. I feel high without ever smoking weed. I could be the life of the party. I could be the conversationalist. I don't need to do that stuff no more. That stuff actually makes me feel off. That stuff makes me feel out of sync. Believe it or not. That stuff makes me feel angry. Or just. Mm, slow. Like when I, when I smoke weed. This is why I stopped. I started feeling slow. I didn't have things to say or I didn't have thoughts. I just started staring like. When I drink, I start feeling angry or sad. Like it's making me feel worse. Some people need it to even be able to open up. I'm perfectly fine opening up. Because when people do some kind of substance, they start opening up, but it's artificially Oh, I love you so much. I'm having the best time. Nah, that's all the substance is talking. I go to a party and I start... I start telling people exactly how I feel. 100%. And they look shook. But they always shake my hand. You're more authentic when you're sober. You're not so fake and just so... All this, right? I could flirt with women way better when I'm sober. It becomes a new type of like thing to me to flirt with women. It's like, all right, 
well, I don't need to be high. I don't need to be drunk because it's our own, it's our own feeling in itself. You know what I'm saying? And it's to the point where I don't even want to do nothing with them until I really get to know them like for years or just months, you know? Like women, women be over here trying to get with me, and I'll be like, "Ooh, I have to talk them, talk them down, talk them out of it." Like, you have a boyfriend, um, you basically all types of just messy stuff, trying to get caught, trying to get attention. Like, I am not going to do that with you, madam. <laughs> I'm a child of God. Even if I almost slip up sometimes, God saves me, protects me. So yeah, we're living in a generation that's completely backwards. It's cool to get high. Even though we've seen all this growing up, and we told ourselves we're not going to get high, we're not going to get drunk, we're going to go to college, we're going to make it out. But then people hit a certain age and it's like, all out the window. Now they want to get drunk. Now they want to get high. And when they do that, they let the devil in. And then they want to have sex. And now they got kids. And they're not even married. And now they're caught in a trap. And it's harder for them to get out and go to college. And I just realized recently that going to college is the way out. Because even if you can move out of your parents' house, even if you can start living on your own, even if you can get a job, I realize it's not even the way out no more. That's not even the way out. That's just another trap in itself. Now you got more bills to pay. Now you got to work more. Now you can only spend a little bit of time with people that you meet. And those people probably didn't go to college, so then they have to work too. So now you have to balance the schedule. And the schedule in itself... How are you going to ever make it to a new situation, to a new city, to a new car, to a new house? There's no way out, guys. The only way out is through college. That's why most people don't go to college. It's like a test. It's like we're rats and it's a test. And they're seeing which which rats have the self-control to go to college, to do the hard things, to make it out. And that's just financially. I'm just speaking financially. If we're talking spiritually, um, it's really just the good old book. You know, that's basically who will make it out. The ones who can follow by the Holy Bible and spread people into Christ. Uh, lead people into Christ and pray to God and just get right with God, man. I mean, you know, I've made a lot of mistakes. I've made a lot of mistakes. Um, part of part of the reason why I make these YouTube videos for people um, to help them to get some insight, to have someone there um, that could help lead them into Christ. Right? Because no one led me into Christ, guys. God literally led me to Christ. So if there's a human form to lead you into Christ. That's who I'm going to be because I have made a lot of mistakes. But yeah, financially speaking, I mean, you should go to college. You should you should be the sober friend. Um, it's okay to talk to women. Honestly, I'd rather talk to women than men. Men are all trying to tell you what to do and trying to say, oh, you should do this. They just want you to be like them all the time. Like, oh, you don't have to go to college. You can just do this. You can just do this. I know what you can do. But then you look at their life and their life's in shambles. At least women look up to you. At least women want to want to hear what you have to say. That's what, what it's like when you fully mature to a man is you stop trying to be around all the homies and all the men and all the, the old people you used to look up to. You still look up to them, but you already got enough from them. It's time to look up to God in the name of Jesus Christ. And women are going to look up to you because you have um, something that they don't have. Um, you know, and women have their own thing going on. And that's a beautiful thing. A man and a woman complement each other.
But yeah, I mean, a woman isn't a man, so of course she's going to look up to a man. You know, just like if a woman cooked you a home-cooked meal, you're about to look up to her like, man, that takes something special, you know? It's a mutual, it's a mutual thing, so it's not wrong to talk to women, but just don't get sexual immoral with it. Don't, don't be trying to always think with your, with your dingaling. Yeah, you can hug them, you can kiss them, you can, you know, you can, you can just cuddle with them, right? But be careful. Come on now, don't get tainted by the evil spirit, guys. Don't get tainted by the devil of just trying to smash and then nothing else. I've been caught in that trap my whole life. <laughs> From the first time to the last time. Um, basically, I've just been a a machine. Like, all right, let me see what I can do. Let me see what I can do. Basically, just spinning lies, manipulating. I'm telling you guys in the name of Jesus Christ because I'm trying to change. I'm trying to get better. All right, I've already cut out the drugs. I've already cut out the alcohol. I don't like none of that stuff. This stuff makes me feel messed up, man. So the less I do it, the more people look up to me. But just this this sexual demon. It's a real demon. Especially when you quit smoking weed. Especially when you quit drinking. It's a new demon that pops up. And when you start talking to these women, they're going to want you to drink. They're going to want you to smoke. That's why you got to be very clear with them. I do not do this stuff because it messed my life up. Be that role model for them. Sometimes you got to be a little hard on women. You got to tell them, this is who I am. This is what I believe in. If you don't like it, then leave me alone. All right, be kind of bold with it. Don't be that super nice guy or that guy always trying to chase a woman. It's not right. It's not what you want to do. Stand on what you stand on. Only idolize God. Everything else will follow. Just idolize God. Don't idolize these women. Don't idolize the herb, the marijuana. Don't idolize alcohol. Basically, everyone in my life idolizes something. Food. A car. Um, clothing. They might idolize a video game. Everybody idolizes something in my life. I'm telling you, everybody idolizes something. I feel like I'm the only one that idolizes God, Jesus Christ. He puts everything in my life. He created my life. He guides my life. He directs my life. He created my will. He created my story. He wrote my story. It's like a character in a story that doesn't even give thanks to the author that wrote the story. That's what most of these people are like. And it shows in their life. They're stressed out. They're not happy. They're questioning. They don't even know who to question, but they're questioning them. I believe in God and I never question him. I know he has a plan for me. I know every word I speak has a plan. Even if it's a mistake, it might have helped someone realize not to be like me. Or if it's a correct statement then people are going to want to be like me but it's important not to always want to be like somebody pick and choose what's coming that's good from them that's coming from god don't idolize nobody except god do not idolize nobody except god in the name of jesus christ people are idolizing marijuana people are idolizing alcohol people are idolizing sex People are idolizing women. These type of emotional men that need a woman. They need a woman. I've been there, guys. I've been that guy. I've been that cat that needs women. I need a woman. But the more I become a man, it's like the more they just need me. Even if it's not sexually, they just need me to be there. Like They need some type of like relationship with me. And when you leave, these women are going to be so mad. You switch professions or you switch schools or something. You switch to a new college. They're going to be mad. They're going to be texting you all types of stuff, trying to get mad at you. Like, women really need a man around. But be careful. As a man, you have responsibility. It can feel like too much sometimes. 
sometimes I don't even really be acting on nothing because I don't know. Sometimes I think it's because I don't have a lot of confidence, but sometimes I think maybe maybe God just isn't telling me to like try to do something with them, whether it be to ask them on a date or to like hang out with them. Sometimes it feels like God isn't really pushing for that for me. Like he's like, yeah, just post up, just post up, just be there. And, you know, but don't don't get too greedy. Because because every time they leave me, right, like they either want me to just get freaky with them or they want me to just basically they want to leave and move on. to. They want that fast type of situation. Which is like the old me. The old me would have been for that, but they want this fast type of situation. Um, but some don't. Some want a slow type of situation, but then they be afraid to even really like conversate with you or get attached to you. We're living in a really weird time, guys. We're living in a very, very weird time where where you basically got it's not just two types of women these days. Right. But it's two big. Um, there's two big types of women I'm seeing these days. But don't don't get me wrong. There's all different types of women, but there's two very common types of women these days. And that is, you got the kind of woman that, um, basically they've been hurt one or two times. They don't realize everyone's been hurt. <laughs> they don't realize that people go through suffering every day. They think they're special. They've been hurt. So now, they definitely don't want to fuck. Excuse my language. Um... They make it seem like they want to talk and they want to get to know you and they just really want to take things slow. But every time you try to like hit them up, um, they're basically like one wording you and then not responding like they're playing you out like they're basically like I'm going to make him try as hard as he can. But I'm still not going to get attached to him because I've been hurt before I've been hurt and this happened to me like they're like in their feelings like they're butt hurt. They don't realize everybody's got burned in a relationship. <laughs> everybody's gotten burned. And you get to the point where you start to take your feelings out of it. And you just say, well, what do I need in my life, right? Well, I'm going to need a lady that is my wife, that is a good person, that loves me. Even if it's not the person that I'm so set on, right? The person I'm so set on, they already left me, right? It's getting over that and saying... Well, what is logically somebody that should be in my life? They should make me feel good. They should do things for me. I should do things for them. And that's when you pick out somebody new. It's not always getting set on somebody because I'm sorry to break it to you, but you don't always end up with the person that you're dead set on that you want. It's not like you're a kid and you're being spoiled and, and you get whatever you want. That's not life. I'm sorry to break it to you. You don't get what you want in life. Okay, God has a different plan for you. God has something for you. So so quit swatting your blessings away. Quit trying to force a situation. And then you're, you're basically surrendering your entire other blessings that are being thrown at you. You're swatting away blessing after blessing after blessing because of this hurt. But it's okay. This kind of woman is going to get over this hurt. They're going to get over that. They're going to find one day. And if they don't, they're not going to have a very good life. I've seen it. I've seen it. Seen it with women in my own family. They don't want to try again. I've seen it in my own life. I didn't want to try again. But it's to the point where I only want to be around people that are going to make my life better. And there's women out there that are like that. There's men out there that are like that. So my advice is to try again. Then let's go over to the you know other very common women these days. They might not be trying to dis, um, have sex off the bat. But they're trying to have sex. They're looking for like, they're looking for that kind of guy that is just so attractive. Um, they don't care what he's like. They just, they just want that attractive man. Oh, and they just, they just once they find that attractive man and he gives them some kind of attention, um, they're trying to smash. They're trying to do him. You know, they'll probably say like, "I'm trying to do this." Like after you guys have like a a, a moment together, and and she really is like. She's already lusting for you. Then she's trying to go for you. She's trying to, she's going to make the first move. Whether it be she's telling you she's trying to fuck. Or she just hops on top of you, starts kissing you. Whether she just grabs onto you. If you get what I'm saying. 
And, you know, these type of women, either these type of women used to be like the first kind of women who got so hurt that they just don't care no more. They're basically turned reckless and they're just trying to chase after lust. They probably have a whole lot of kids, different, different baby daddies. This could be the first type gone all wrong. Just the devil is within her. Just she's trying to lust for this. This happens to men too, guys. Uh, this happens to men as well. Or this type of woman, um, maybe they were never like the first type, right? Uh, maybe that's just how they are and they need to work it out over time. You know, this is kind of how, how like I was, is like, at first I was just kind of lusting for anyone I could get, anyone I could get that, that, that I was attracted to. But then once they weren't really there for me, just like a lot of these women are probably going to find out that the most attractive guy, um, he might move forward and just not want to be with you. Because, because you lusted for him too fast. You jumped to a conclusion that he wanted to be with you. Um, and you might have either pushed him away or he just didn't have a lot of character. And he was just also lusting for you. But um, this is kind of how I used to be, right? Like, it wasn't with bad intentions. I just, when I, had, when I found somebody attractive, I was like, I'm trying to make this happen. And then, you know, push them away. And they weren't really trying to be with me long term. And this is probably the best thing that could happen. I mean, not the best thing, but, you know, this is something good that happens because then over time you start to slow down. You start to realize um, I shouldn't just be trying to win these people over with my body, right? Like you start to really slow it down. Unfortunately, when you do slow it down, it's not so many people that are really trying to um, engage with you. <laughs> they want you to be, they want you to be like, um, Channing Tatum <laughs> or, or they don't want you, right? Like they don't want the guy trying to go slow and trying to like treat you right and trying to like talk to you. They either want the Channing Tatum just, well, I just say Channing Tatum, like the guy that's just trying to charm them into bed or, or they want, they want some guy that already had, had kind of like hurt them, hurt their heart. That's, that's kind of like the most common women, what they want these days. Um, but yeah, I used to be like both types um, as a man because it goes for men and women, um, obviously. But yeah, I mean, the more I was lusting for the females and I I kind of I kind of grew up a little bit and realized that, you know, I only want to lust for a female that I want her to be my wife. I want to marry her. Um, you know, I want her to I want her to have faith. I want to have a connection with her um, and I want to have a connection with God and I want her to have a connection with me and God in the name of Jesus Christ. So it kind of, it kind of showed me that, you know, um, to slow down a little bit, um, to relax a little bit, um, because just because you're lusting for somebody, that's not like your heart and that's not your feelings. And that's not like what God is trying to show you. It's like, you're just thinking with your dingling, you know, and it, it, Sometimes it works out by pure luck, by pure chance, or just, you know, pure chance, like God was trying to show you them, and then you did have that for them, and you guys did, and then you got married, and then, you know, it, it does work out sometimes, but, uh, you know, it's just your mindset. If you got the same mindset, like you trying to smash every girl, that's what I'm saying we need to get away from, and the women also need to get away from that, um, because it's fine to just talk to a lot of women. Because it's going to be a lot of women that are so into smoking, drinking, um, you know, just worldly stuff. Find where their idols lay, guys. Do they idolize marijuana? Do they idolize alcohol? Do they idolize food? Do they idolize God? And unfortunately, when you find a woman that idolizes God, she's not always going to, um, she's not always going to warm up to you so well. Because she's listening to God um, for the for the correct. Um, she's listening to God to be guided to her husband. So you're going to take all these worldly tactics and try to and try to charm her. And then she's going to be saying like, but God isn't telling me, but God isn't telling me. So even if you find a woman that idolizes God, you, you might need to sort of. It sounds messed up, guys, but you need to play the field a little bit. You need to get a handful of women that are idolizing God 
and then let them choose you. Just talk to them. Just have conversations. Speak to them about God. Speak to them about Jesus. And, you know, let them pick you because God needs to tell them something. All right. God needs to speak to them to say, like, yeah, he could be your husband. Same with you. You need to hear what God has to say about these women. Let God guide you to which woman that you want to be your wife. So it can be a little more tricky. Um, uh, it can be a little more tricky when you're looking for the right women, right woman, right? But it's it's less tricky in the long run because now feelings aren't going to be hurt. Kids aren't going to be had with the wrong people. Um, addictions aren't going to be started. Um, you're not going to influence people in the wrong directions. Like for me, I influence a lot of people in the wrong directions back in my olden days. Like I'm talking about starting old girlfriends on smoking weed, starting old girlfriends on drinking, getting, you know, getting effed up, um, just listening to demonic music, um, just basically just I was so lost um, and I and I have regrets, but I know God just I know God is with me from here to so it's fine. But like I didn't want I didn't want to start making my. I didn't want to start making it seem cool to smoke marijuana. And now these girls that were looking up to me, now they're like potheads and it, it's not good. Or I didn't want to seem, I didn't want to idolize drinking alcohol. Like, you know, even though, even though in my life I've, I've been trying to stay away from alcohol for a while because it was a big problem for me. Um, when I first started drinking before I was even 21, when I first started drinking, um, it was a big problem for me, ruining relationships, becoming homeless, um, just having sex with the wrong people, um, just passing out, just any type of negative situation, I'd go get drunk. Like, yep, I could go get drunk now. I could go get drunk. You get what I'm saying? Like some type of, um, not only a pattern, but it's like a coping mechanism, which I'm so glad with the grace of God that I beat that. I'm so thankful that I beat that addiction. Um, cause Lord knows most of the people around me have not beat that addiction, but, um, you know, so maybe, maybe I, I didn't get so drunk no more, but I was like, all right, I'm kicking it with my girl. Like, let me have a couple beers. And then I drink a couple beers and I'm like the life of the party. I'm over here dancing. I'm over here telling jokes. I'm over here saying all this stuff. I'm kind of like how I am now sober. Right. But to them, because I was already having that addiction, um, it looked cool when I got drunk. It looked cool, like, dang, like, he's having fun. And then these women look up to you, and they want to be like you. So they want to drink now. Looking back, I have ex-girlfriends that are potheads. Now, looking back, I have girlfriends that like to drink. They didn't grow up this way. I mean, depending, you know, the one that drinks. She didn't grow up with parents that drink. She didn't grow up in any type of situation where she saw drinking. At least not on, like, some sort of bad level where you get really effed up you know it's one thing to have a drink on new year's one drink or two drinks but you know what i'm saying she didn't see that but then she saw me and then now she thinks it's like cool or something you know and now she does that and that resides onto me or you know you meet a you meet a you meet a girlfriend and then um, she don't smoke weed, right? But then you're like, oh yeah, well, I'm trying to quit smoking or whatever, but yeah, I could smoke. And then you smoke and then she smokes for the first time with you and her friends. And then now, now years go by and she's like some big pothead. She smokes all the time. She smokes before work. She smokes on break at work. Uh, she got a baby, but she's still smoking. She's smoking all the time. She got a, she got a bong. It's not good guys. It's not good, right? It's not good to influence people in the wrong direction. That's of the devil. That's why I need to make these YouTube videos to influence people in the correct direction and put my pain, my suffering. I'm not complaining about any suffering I went through. I'm here to put it on camera for you all to watch and for you all to make the correct decisions because it's in your hands, guys. God, it will guide you. God will correct you. Maybe God may, maybe God put me through this to make this video to correct your decisions to influence you in the correct direction. I'm not here to question God, but I am here to speak to you all 
and I am here to influence you for the better. And all the grace goes to God in the name of Jesus Christ. I give him all the praise. Amen.